having seen the intelligent homosexuals guide to capitalism and socialism with a key to the scriptures, I practiced. Um, <laughs> uh, Tony's, if you don't know, Tony's most recent major play, um, uh, which is not in print yet, but no. hopefully will be soon. Um, Still working. It's on. very Miller-esque. It, it seemed to me. Is that was that conscious or? Well, I, I was working, uh, I started writing it in 2009 at the Guthrie. I did this thing that I'll never ever do again. I, uh, when uh, Joe Dowling uh, approached me in, I think, 2003 and said, we'd like to do a season of your work at the Guthrie and we'll do Carolina Change and uh, in the studio theater we'll do five of your one acts, which we called Tiny Kushner. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> My husband thought that, uh, under four hours, right? And it's, it was very short. Uh, and then, uh, and then he said, "But we need a for the main stage. We need a new play." And it was 2003, and they wanted to do it in 2009. And, and I had just said yes to doing the screenplay for Lincoln, uh, uh, for Spielberg. And, and I thought, well, you know, so I'll work on that for a couple of years because it's a very difficult subject. But then, I'll have years to write this new play. And uh, by late 2008. Um, we were supposed to go in rehearsal in, in April of 2009. I had nothing. I was still working on Lincoln, and um, uh, which was the hardest thing I've ever done. And um, Joe Dowling kept calling and saying, um, "You know, what, what are we? What are we doing?" So I, I called my friend Michael Greif, who's this really great director, and I said, "Would you direct this play? I have a title, but I don't have any. Literally, have nothing else." And then he said yes. And then a couple of months later, I called and said, "Could you let's hire these designers that we've both worked with a lot, um, I, and I'll tell you where it takes place." And they, <laughs> the design, I'm not kidding. The designers said yes. And I called. Uh, some actor friends of mine, Linda Eamond and Kathy Chalfant and Steven Spinella and Michael Esper, a couple of other people, and said, okay, I'm going to the Guthrie in about a month and a half. I don't have uh, anything written, but I mean, would you come and do this play? And they all said yes. <laughs> then we auditioned. I decided that I wanted to write an 11-character play, so I had already cast like five friends, and, then, and so I went to Minneapolis and we did auditions. I gave them other things to read, uh, and we cast all 11 people. And then the first day of rehearsal, I called and um, uh, said, I don't have anything for you to read yet, but I'll have something tomorrow. Um, <coughs> I did the same thing when I wrote uh, the play Slavs at, for Actress Theatre of Louisville. And I called John Jory about two days before, uh, that was supposed to be a one act, and I called John Jory uh, uh, about two days before, and I said, John, and he said, listen, Tony, don't say a word, don't say a word. I just want to, just tell me one thing. And I said, what? He says, tell me everything is going to be fine. <laughs> and I said, well, I don't know. He goes, no, no, say it, say the words. John, everything is going to be fine. <laughs> I said, okay, John, everything's going to be fine. He said, thank you, and he hung up. <laughs> and that did it. So I called Joe Dowling, and I thought, Joe is going to say the same thing, basically. He's going to be stoic and tough. And he, He's, you know, uh, this Irish guy, and he says, he, said, he says, so what, what are you, what are we doing? What are we doing? And then I said, well, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm trying to get the first scene. With well, the first scene, oh my God, oh, this is terrible. What, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? It's awful. It's just it completely hysterical, and I had to calm him down. I wrote the play in rehearsal. Uh, the f I delivered the first scene um, on the second day of rehearsal, and uh, basically a scene a day after that. We did the first read-through of the third act, uh, the fourth act, the last act of the play, uh, uh, during the 10 out of 12s in tech uh, at midnight. I, this was really the worst moment in my entire writing life. Um, even people that I have worked with for years, like Linda and Steven, who love me and who I love, were ready to murder me. Um, <laughs> the first time anybody, including me, heard the entire play from start to finish was in the first preview. We'd never had a chance to run it, we just did it. Of course, the first preview is the smoothest preview of anything I've ever written, because everybody was so frightened that they <laughs> went through. And, and, uh, so, uh, and so that was, uh, you know, it was like, uh, don't try this at home. I mean, it was <laughs> a nightmare. Um, and I'm kind of proud that we pulled it up and it's, it's an interesting play. But I'm still uh, 
one of the consequences of that is that I'm still working on it. We're going to do a production in London in the fall, and I'm, I'm actually, uh, before I came downstairs at uh, 6, well, I was upstairs trying to fix Act 4, Scene 2, which I've <laughs> done like 400 drafts of. That's why I haven't published it yet. But I, I've promised everybody, my husband, my publisher, everybody that I'm going to publish this version. And, and then I think I've, it's time to put it away. It's one of those plays that could just eat you alive because I'll never do everything that I wanted. It'll never do everything I wanted it to do. In answer to your question, um, <laughs> I was editing Arthur's plays for the Library of America at the time. I was turning 50, and I, I'm very conscious of myself as being an American playwright in the tradition of American playwriting. Uh, and uh, so I thought I want to write a kind of mid-century, modernist, monster daddy play. It doesn't really, I mean, it has a 20-minute scene in which 11 people are all on stage screaming at each other for 20 minutes. Um, and so it's, and they're really screaming. It's an amazing scene. It, it goes on forever. It's so much fun to do. It takes forever to just, to, and I think it makes the play really hard to read. One reason I haven't published it yet, apart from the fact that I don't like it yet, is that uh, <laughs> I don't know how to do the page layout so that people who aren't actors and directors can read, because you have to jump to where your character continues, and it's a mess. But so that Arthur didn't do that. But um, uh, other than that, it was an attempt to do a kind of family kitchen sink yeah. drama.